Atlas Chapter 3, Lesson 3. This lesson is about creating interactive programs using events. We're going to continue uh, with the same concepts that we had in Lesson 2. We're going to create a program called Grow Flowers, Part 1. We're also going to review some concepts and learn a few more about events. At this point, you should have already downloaded the document and put your name in the header for the notes and also opened up Alice and opened up the program for this assignment. Let's review our concepts from Chapter 3. Interactive programs are different every time we run them versus the programs that the non-interactive programs we did in Chapters 1 and 2, which were computer-centric. Interactive programs are user-centric and their sequence of actions are determined by a user at runtime. An event is something that happens in Alice and it triggers a response. A response is the code that runs. It is triggered by an event. An event is linked to a response. So that's how the computer knows which method or which code to run. You link it to the event and we've been doing that when we created our event listener. Events let you control the program so you determine when something's going to happen. The common events in Alice are scene activated, key pressed, and mouse clicked on. Some things to remember. The Alice world listens for events and then identifies which event happened in an event listener. The, all the events are available for the entire world, which means events are declared at the scene level. When we created procedures, we would sometimes do them at the scene level, but many times we would do it at a superclass level and a rare a few times at the subclass level. But it, when it comes to events, events are for the entire program, for the entire world, and they are created at the scene level. Events call methods or procedures by linking to them. We'll practice this once again in our program. We'll just point out when it's actually being linked. Before we go any further, let's have a video lecture check. Are you listening to the entire lecture and not skipping ahead? Are you taking notes as you go? And are you pausing when you need to? Now we're going to get into Alice and do some more programming with events. At this point, you should have already started Alice and from the backpack opened up Chapter 3, Lesson 3 program. You're going to follow the instructions in this lecture to create an interactive program in Alice that will also use a procedure that you're going to create. But keep taking notes while you follow the instructions and we'll wrap it all up at the end. For this program, we're going to make these plants, I've called them flowers, but they're really just plants. We're going to make these plants grow by doing a key press. I've got a comment started for you, so make sure you fill in your program name and the date. Your, your name and the date. And I've just added a line, a line of code here to give instructions, such as type the numbers one through five to grow the plants. In our first program, we use letters. So in this program, we're going to use numbers. You'll see that it works pretty much the same. Now, all of these plants are going to be growing, and I want them to spin just a little bit so it's really obvious that they're growing. So they're going to grow a little bit and spin a little bit. They're all going to be doing the same action. So instead of programming each one of them separately, I can create a procedure to make each one grow and use some parameters. All of these are in the same superclass. You can see right here, they're all a prop. So we haven't done this very often, but it's just like the quadrupeds or bipeds or flyers. I have a prop class and I can add a procedure. So I'm, we're going to create a prop procedure for grow. Let's go ahead and click here. We're going to call it grow. And I'm going to use two lines of code here and I want them to happen at the same time. So it's going to get bigger and it's going to do a little spin at the same time. So let's draw, drag up a do together. And I want my plant, whichever one it is, to resize. So let's find resize right here. And I'm just going to pick a number. And I want it to turn, which is going to make it spin. So let's find turn. 
and I'm going to just pick to the left and I'm going to pick just a little bit. Now I can have every plant grow exactly the same or I can throw in some parameters to make it just a little bit different each time so the flowers can grow at different rates, they can spin at different rates or in a different direction. Let's start for one for how much. How big is it going to get? We're going to add a parameter. I'm going to call it how big. And I like to make my parameters like a question so it's easy to remember. And what type is this? Well, it is going to be a number, but it's not going to be a whole number. Otherwise, it's going to get big really quickly. So I'm going to use a decimal number. Now that I have my parameter, you can see there's a couple places to put it. I want to put it where I am resizing. So I'm going to drag my parameter on top of resize. And now every plant can grow at its own size. Now just to throw in a little bit of extra, maybe I want them to be able to spin differently as well. So I'm going to add a second parameter for which direction. I'm just going to call it which way to save a little bit of typing. So let's add a parameter. I'm going to call it which way. And let's look at the type. Hopefully you remember what type it is because you did do this in chapter 2. You know that it's none of these. It's not a number or a string. I'm going to come to my other types and I see a turn direction. So that looks pretty good. And now I've got this and sure enough I can drop it right there for left. So whenever I call this procedure for a different plant, I can pick how big and which way it's going to turn. Okay, our first method is going to stay just the same and we are ready to do our events. Let's click on our event listener and let's do one for the first plan over here, which is our banana tree. I'm going to add an event listener, and I'm going to do a keyboard key press. And then, of course, I have to drag up my if control structure. Always pick true. I'm going to come over here to the last parameter, event is key. And this time I'm going to come to digits and I'm going to say one. I'm going to skip zero because we don't normally type zero. We normally start with one. Okay. Now what do I want to happen if I do hit the one on the keyboard? Well, I want my banana tree to grow. I've already selected banana tree and you can see right here that he, the grow procedure shows up. So let's drag the grow procedure right here to the if statement. And I can say how big. I don't really like any of these numbers because I want it to grow. It has to be bigger than 1, but if I have it go all the way to 2, it's going to grow big very quickly. So I'm going to do my own custom number. And then I'm going to choose, do I want it to go to the left or to the right? And I could actually ha have it turn forward or backward, but I'm going to pick to the left. Now for my custom number, I'm going to pick maybe 1.25. So it'll grow a little bit each time. Now what I've just done is link this event with this method or procedure. So now these two are linked. When I do the key press and it's a 1, this procedure will be executed. I've just linked them. That's an important concept with events. If I have an event and it's not linked to anything, then nothing will happen, even if I've got it programmed here. So a really important step is for every event, I link it to a method or procedure. Now we want to do incremental development. So I've got one event going right now. and I already know what I'm going to do for the rest of them. Before I get carried away, I want to make sure that this procedure works and that the link is working correctly. There's no sense in going on and using this procedure or continuing my events if something is not working correctly. So incremental development is to do a little bit at a time. Let's run this. There's my instruction. I'm going to hit the number one on my keypad and sure enough, it's growing and it's turning to the left. And it's just going to keep on growing and get insanely big. So I can be pretty confident that everything is working. I'm ready to do my next event. Let's click on our Add Event Listener. And let's add another one. I'm going to just repeat this process. So I drag up my if. I select true. I drag over here my parameter. I'm going to come to digits and this time I'm going to select two. I've already done the banana tree so let's go to the next plant and this is my century plant. Here's my grow procedure. 
I'm going to link it to my event. I'm going to select a custom number, and this time I'm going to have it go to the right. I, that one was 1.25. Let's make this one a little bit bigger, so I'm going to make it 1.4. Now I want to do my incremental development again, so let's run this. You're going to see that 1 still works, and now let's try a 2. Okay, sure enough, it's working really good. And I can go back and forth. That's the nice thing about an interactive program is I can determine the order of the execution. I feel pretty confident that everything's working. I need to do three more events for each of the three plants. So I want you to pause the video right now and just do the next steps on your own. You don't need my help. All right, if you've got all of your procedures and your events completed and you run this program, it should look something like this. There's your introduction, and then whichever order you type your numbers, something should happen. Now if you have time and if you want to, you can adjust your grow so that maybe something more th than this happens. Maybe you want to add in a saying or change your color, you know, just anything. So you can modify your grow so that it does more than just these two steps. You can also add some more plants if you'd like and some more events. So feel free to customize this program any way you want. You've already met the minimum, so just find a way to be creative and uh, complete it so and to your satisfaction in a way that looks really good when you're finished with this go uh, let's continue the video lecture for our review our recap and then you'll be ready to turn everything in now that you've finished your program let's just do a concept recap the events and event listeners are added at the scene level you can see the button here for scene and here's where our initialize event listeners tab is you can tell that it's pretty easily that it's at the scene level. And remember, an event triggers a response. Here is the first event that happens every time you run a program. Scene activated always happens automatically, and it's linked to my first method. And that's why my first method always happens right away. Scene activated is the event, and it triggers a response. My first method is the response, and they are linked. A response is code that happens when it is triggered, and a response is often a method or procedure that is linked to an event. So here we have a procedure that we're going to be that we linked to our event. Now we have many parts of code that we've been using and discussing. Let's just label each one. So first of all, where do we add an event? Remember that you do it at the Initialize Event Listeners tab. What we have here is a couple of events. Can you label them? This event is key pressed. We also have an event for scene activated. Now where's our event handling method? Remember it's what we're linked to. So this is an event handling method. And also grow is an event handling method. Both of them are linked to an event. Where's our control structure? Remember, we use a control structure to determine which key is pressed. So we're using the if control structure. Our procedures can still have parameters and arguments. Do you remember the difference? The parameter is the question, like how much, and the argument is the answer, like 1.3. We've gone through our program and we've gone through our review. So now make sure your name is in a comment in your program. Make sure that you've saved your program correctly in your student account. Save the program in the backpack. And also complete the notes. Make sure your name is in the header and save it in the backpack. Turn in everything for a grade.